Welcome to Let's Play the Master System incarnation of Superman the Man of Steel. I hope you're ready for this. First off, I'll let you enjoy the game's title screen a little bit. And that's quite enough of that. The game does have some options, and for the sake of I'm not quite sure what, I'm going to put the difficulty on a much more supermanly medium, and while it's really very tempting to turn the music off, I'm afraid it's staying on. Each level begins like this, Superman is up to his old tricks and is attacking Metropolis, if you believe the Daily Planet. Superman's basic abilities are punching, jumping, ducking and flying. Most of the enemies can be dealt with in particular ways, such as ducking and mashing punch until they die. For airborne enemies though, jumping up into them from below is your best bet. Superman holds his fist up classic Mario style, and considering you can't punch while airborne, this will usually be your only option. The pits between buildings obviously pose no danger to Superman, he automatically starts flying when you fall in. Flying though is usually a poor choice, as your path is almost always blocked by one of these green pulse lasers, which can only be destroyed from the ground. They're very easy to get hit by, and you need to approach them very carefully. Flying anywhere near them is almost a guaranteed hit. Occasionally, when you kill an enemy, it'll drop a power-up. They'll shoot off screen almost immediately, but they actually go around in a circle, so if you just wait where the enemy died, they'll always come back around into you. Unless, of course, you get stuck on the geometry. There's also a few static ones in each level. This one gave us limited use of Superman's heat vision, which you can only use while airborne. The very narrow vertical hitbox makes using it while jumping very difficult, and the flying controls are so floaty that really, heat vision is next to useless. The little yellow marker to the right hand side of our health shows that we have a heat vision power up. There's also one that can appear on the left hand side which we'll get in the next level. I'll probably be spending most of the rest of the game with some heat vision ammo since it's unlikely I'll ever manage to use it all up. Like a lot of 8-bit games you can maybe have 3 or 4 shots on the screen at once and you can fire them as fast as you can push the button. It's really far more useful for generating sprite lag in some of the tougher sections. I'm getting fairly low on health at this point, so I was pretty desperate to pick up this normal coloured Superman symbol, which obviously restores some of your health. I was still a little low though, so I figured I'd fly all the way back to nearly the start of the level where I remember there being a static health pickup waiting for me. You can actually fly pretty damn fast when you have the opportunity to do so. Enemies don't respawn when you scroll back through an area, although the UFO-like enemies will continue to reappear, often even if you stay still. Next up is a vertical section with rocks and coins being dropped, as well as the jetpack guys again. You have infinite heat vision for this flying section, which is just as well since of course you can't do anything else. Spamming heat vision to slow the game down is a viable tactic, but the way you can actually laser the coins as well, destroying them. You really want to grab as many of the coins and shoot out as many of the rocks and jetpack guys as you can to gain some points here, as points are actually fairly important. Every 100,000 of them gets you an extra continue, but you don't have any extra lives at all so your score resets and you have to start over the section that you're in. Anyway, this is the boss of the first level. I'm afraid my Superman lore is insufficient to work out if this is just some guy they made up, or if he's actually based on an actual villain. My main expertise is in playing obtusely difficult games. A friend of mine suggested it might be Toy Man though, and a bit of googling around suggests that that might be the case. Anyway, he's basically a pushover, so on to the next level. So to summarise, we've saved the city, got another continue, and kidnapped some children. Unlike the previous level, this level is an enclosed warehouse with really nowhere to fly at all. Instead of presumably kryptonite lasers, we have Mega Man doors blocking our path, which obviously we can just punch through. That static power up at the start gives us some super punch ammo, so instead of 20 odd punches, now we can break through the door in only 3 hits. There's an entirely new cast of enemies for this level as well, which I think is rather unusual for a Master System game. Either way, you can jump up into the turrets to destroy them, but otherwise skipping over basically everything else is the order of the day. As you may have noted, you don't get your health refilled between levels. That's the main reason for trying to get to continue every level, so you can just throw your life away at the beginning of the next one if you really have to. Anyway, so the super punch took me a little while to work out. You have to hold down the punch button rather than rapid fire it like you would normally, and it'll shoot a little yellow sphere out that actually does a ton of damage. With some careful jumping you can actually take a shortcut under this platform, but I decided to go the long way around. That was mainly to try and find some more power ups before the boss, so I'd have a little more health and super punch ammo. I missed one such pickup in the ceiling here by neglecting to jump or fly up there. 
If you were wondering, the rest of the game will basically be taking this closed-in building format, in order to best marginalise that inconvenient flying Superman is so well known for, and prevent it from disrupting the otherwise awful gameplay. Through this door are the meaningless children we're here to save. You may remember though that the room to the left of here is actually a dead end, the only way to escape it is to fly out of the hole in the ceiling, so I'm not really sure how we've helped those kids. Anyway, this is the last room before the boss. All you have to do is fly left to get out, but there's a power-up in the bottom right I feel like getting. With our health as good as it's likely to get, it's time to face the boss of this level. Unlike the previous one, he's located in the same area we started in. He is, however, every bit as generic looking. Yeah, I pretty much have no idea who this guy is supposed to be. If anyone has any ideas, feel free to contribute, as this guy actually ends up turning up again later. In terms of the way he fights, he'll run at you and then stop, then depending on which side of him you're on, he'll start punching or jump up into the air and slowly glide down. Dumping three of your super strength punches into him and then running away is a pretty good way to beat him, since he'll eventually start punching or running at you if you stand around attacking him for too long. Obviously though, you want to pay attention to the little yellow symbol so you notice when you run out. I didn't. It doesn't really matter though, because he's dead now. With level 2 out of the way, we found the kids, not saved them, and we've got another continue. Next time, we hijack the subway.